This lost episode picks up on our adventure from 2017 with the herd of turtles. We just finished up a couple days of soaking in the incredible hot springs, exploring nearby Eureka Dunes, then circling back again along Steel Pass. What do you think? <laughs> Lifestyle over there? Can you say lifestyle over there? Let's say Ultraman. Yeah. But now it was time for the herd members to break camp and head back to their respective homes. We decided instead to take the long way back and work our way along South Pass to the Panamint Valley before heading east over Mingle Pass. This was a new route for us and we were unsure if the rig and trailer would make it through since we received mixed advice from other travelers. But we were looking forward to the challenge and finding out for ourselves. I was trying to get my apple. Oh, did you lose it? Yeah, mommy. Oh, it's stuck. You pushed it in there too far. Thank you. Oh, oh man. Good stuff. quickly turning into a uh, four-wheeler road. After several miles of trails alongside beautiful canyon walls and the occasional abandoned mine, things suddenly began to get a bit more technical. We were beginning to wonder if we'd made a good decision to tackle this trail alone. But with the sun beginning to set, and the golden hour falling on this Panamint range, it was hard to even think about turning around. We wanted to see what was over the next hill and around the next bend. While we had owned this turtleback for almost a year at this point, 
Sarah was just getting started with her off-road driving career, and this terrain was her biggest challenge to date. So tonight we're here at uh, Mingle Pass in Death Valley and uh, run a little behind but it is a beautiful sunset. things even more interesting. Camping spots were nowhere to be found and it wasn't long before darkness set in on our little family as the trail got even more challenging. Reach down there on that trailer controller and bump it up. Keep pressing it. Keep going. Give it all she's got. When does it stop? All right, leave it right there. All right, so what I want you to do is start cutting driver uh, just a little bit. And again, just let off the brake till it starts moving. Brake back on and let it let it slide. Just keep it pointing the way you want it to go, okay? Ready. Gently. You got it. Your camber looks okay. You're good. Good girl. You got it. You got it. Keep coming with what you've got. Okay, come on over this guy. That's right. Just keep on coming. Oh, you're so good. There you go. Now, now cut her. Gently, gently. There you go. Come on. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, you're gonna slide a little here, it's okay. Perfect, perfect. Now just ease down these guys. Uh, now cut right. A little more driver. Yeah. Driver. There you go. Perfect. Uh, 
There you go. Gently, gently. That's okay. All right, come on. Hold exactly the line that you have now. Just tap it down. Just tap it down. All right, now gently. Gently. There you go. You got it. Good job. All right. Now drop this wheel easy. Good, good. It's okay. It's what's made for. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, just like that. Just like that. Got passenger. There, hold that. Hold that line and come on down. Gently. It's okay. Come on. Perfect. Excellent. Clears. Okay, cut. Just do what you do. Now just take your natural line. This trail was definitely pushing the limits of our comfort level, but thankfully our rig and trailer was more than up for the task, and we breathed a sigh of relief as we completed the worst of the obstacles and made our way to the first flat spot big enough to camp. It's funny looking back at what we felt was a fairly challenging trail and how after several years of off-road experience from the Gulf Coast to the Arctic Coast, these obstacles seem minor in comparison to our perspective now. It is a good reminder that everyone has their own comfort levels and the only thing that raises the bar is time and experience. Just remember, it takes a balance of never being afraid to turn around and also being willing to take on new challenges from time to time when you can do so safely. It's what helps you expand your abilities and learn lessons that can take you further in the future. It's shower day. I think it's bedtime. I think you're stinky. Huh? I think you're a little stinky. Snowy, Mom. Pee. You. Snowy, I'm ahead. She. Sweet. <laughs>
morning, we made our way down the east side of the pass, towards Death Valley. It came upon an odd sight for these hills. This cluster of buildings was once the headquarters and bunkhouse for the nearby talc mines, which dotted the hillside with their white tailings. We found that the name Warm Springs Camp was due to the hot springs that bubbled from the ground not too far from these buildings. At some point in time, a swimming pool was built to capture its warmth, which must have been a treat for the workers after a long day in the mines. Bodies in there? Nope. Nice. The miners were far from the first to occupy this little oasis since the Panamint Shoshone tribe spent many winters here near the Warm Springs. A tribal chief named Panamint Tom built a ranch here in the late 1800s, but a devastating flood soon destroyed his hard work along with over 150 fruit trees. This might account for the many non native trees and flowers surrounding the small ghost camp. Can you go in this house? Let's see what that pine falls over there. Where's, where's... It's like bath water. Wow. Okay. Come on. Oh, you even got a blue drawn down there? It's like the leaves and the flowers over there. Our adventures in Death Valley have never failed to surprise or challenge us in some new way. While this was only our second experience, it was far from our last. Death Valley was quickly becoming one of our favorite places to explore, and we couldn't wait to return again to its wild and beautiful landscape. <laughs>